Is everybody's connection yeah. with the Court of Owls different in the storyline? Yeah. Really like yeah. um, so uh, it's a great question, which is, you know, in, in the context of a comic story or even in an animated movie, there's an opportunity to delve into some of the deep lore and deep connections between the individual heroes and the Court of Owls. What we needed to do was say, how do we tell that story or interpret that story with these four heroes where it doesn't feel like one of them is secretly the actual hero of the story, right? And we actually had that problem in more than one, you know, more than one way. It wasn't just Dick Grayson having been at Haley Circus. It was a bunch of things. And you know, when you look at those four characters, and I don't want to give spoilers, but if you go digging, you can probably imagine it. Each of them kind of had a thing that if we were like, if we don't manage this well, they become a kind of a, a disproportionate focus to this to this game. And we want to make sure that everyone is kind of equally in the same boat. You know, kind of a level playing field for the heroes as they're starting. So that was a that was a fun challenge, but we were able to manage. It. So how did, you, how did you decide? How did you decide the, the heroes that you want? In so in talking with DC, one of the things we realized is for this particular story, in this particular game, we wanted to go to the earliest days of the Batman family. We wanted to really start with who were the original protégés that worked with him as a crime fighter from the beginning and had the longest history with him so that we could kind of spread that out in a way that would create some contrast between the characters. Um, it's a really, really hard problem because, perfect, to be perfectly honest, there are other characters that have been part of that family uh, as you move you know, closer to the present day who would have given us much greater range, right? It would have allowed us to say, oh, we're going to have a character that's like a character that can fly, you know, and a character... Like we could have, we could have had a much bigger range of difference between them, but it was hard to rationalize that and, and reconcile it with the need to have the characters that were really his children, like really the closest to him in terms of that common shared history. What emotions do you want this Gotham City to give the players, especially early on? In the game? You know, it's funny. Um, the question of giving or imposing emotions on players is something I always, I always struggle with this because. I feel like at the end of the day our job is to deliver a certain kind of aesthetic experience by having the right dynamic to the game and the right dynamic comes from what is the player doing how are they interacting with the game world with the, with the ingredients in it so I think to answer your question best we tried not to say oh we want you to feel dread or we want you to be scared all the time because it's still a game about a heroic fantasy you need to feel like I, I've got this I've got a shot at it it might turn out to be bigger and worse than I thought it was but I, I will find a way and so what we always tried to do was make sure that at any given moment there are tools that the player can can use and there should be a, a number of valid strategies for taking on any given enemy that you come across or any given crime that you come across or any given mystery that you need to solve so I think you know if I had to answer it the emotion I would say would be one of resourcefulness you know it's like okay I want I want the player to be obsessing over how they're going to solve that problem even when they put the controller down and they're you know making a sandwich and I and I think that that became the kind of underlying emotional tone to the whole thing. It's like curiosity, uh, intrigue, you know, the kinds of things that would drive someone who's a member of the Batman family. Can you say which elements of the, the main characters um, do you think in, in each case what the uh, gamer would identify with? Yeah, I mean I think um, you know, Batgirl's ability set and her progression is heavily built around the notion of resilience and tenacity and the ability kind of to doggedly focus on a target or a problem and dismantle it. And so that's how we, and everything from combat to how she interacts with technology to how she handles traversal is built around that theme. So if you're the kind of player, and, and, I, and I, to a certain extent I would say that Batgirl in some ways most closely resembles the Batman of the Arkham series, you know, if you want to think of it in, those, in that respect. Red Hood is, you know, the, the easy, facile way to put it is that, oh, he's all about the rage and the power and the, you know, violence. It isn't just this. It's about harnessing what's inside you. And because his character has gone through death and resurrection, we really loved the idea that a whole lot of his potential, a whole lot of the abilities that he would eventually be able to bring to the table once he achieves knighthood would be things that were in there that he didn't know he had. You know, he's lost a, punch, a chunk of his memory. He's suffering from, like, traumatic brain injury for all intents and purposes. 
forces, and he's been violently resurrected and had his you know mind manipulated, um, and he's come out the other side of that, and he's redeemed himself. And so the idea of harnessing the abilities and potential that you didn't know you had access to or weren't aware of became a thematic element for him. In the case of Nightwing, it's, it's a no-brainer. He's a leader. And so for him as a potential co-op teammate, it made sense that we would give him more buffs that he could then use to help benefit mechanically the other players that he's playing with. And then finally, in the case of Robin, we love the idea of this is a kid who's relatively new to the crime-fighting game. He might not be the biggest, toughest, scariest individual out there, but he's going to use his brain and his smarts and his resourcefulness to make himself into a scarier force than he actually is. So the idea of Robin transforming himself into this kind of wraith-like piece of urban folklore. Uh, you know, he masters invisibility. He masters the Justice League teleporter. He's using various status effects and gizmos that will disrupt and mess with enemies. He's making himself scary because he's not a scary person intrinsically, right? Uh, and so, yeah, those were the kinds of sort of thematic aspects to each of those heroes that we tried to then manifest in terms of game systems and play. Sorry, not cut in, but that's the time we have. <laughs> okay.